Hi everyone, welcome back to Dev Doge Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. Now, continuing the topic about the switch, the switch is just another way to control the flow, uh, similarly to the if else statement, but with a different syntax. So you can see here that the switch case can be a little bit cleaner than uh, if you just put several if else statements. And we saw here that we have the break keyword. The break keyword is going to stop the flow because once the case is found based on the type of the variable, we saw that the case and the value that we have here should match exactly the type of the variable. For example, if you put here like string, it's going to fail. Why? Because string cannot be compared to integer. So if you just hold your mouse, you will see that the required type is int and the provided is a string. If here was a string, then it would require us to have a string in all of them. Okay, so we have here our break. Uh, it means that once one case is found, then the code will start the execution. And once the break is found, it's going to get out of the switch statement. So uh, if we have here finished, we are going to see that we have Wednesday and then the finished. So it's not like it's going to stop the program, just that instruction uh, from the case. But we know what happens if, for example, I type here eight. So technically eight, there is no day that represents the number eight. And this is something that, for example, the else is not able to, to, to solve. If we put here any number like two, 18, for example, we are still going to get Saturday when actually we should think about something else. In this case, how do we solve this with if else? We're going to have is if else, another one here, for example, day equals seven. And then we are going to add here another else, invalid day number. And how do we do it with switch statement? Because switch right now, if you press Ctrl Shift F10, you will see that is not being executed because it tries case one, two, three, four, up to seven and no case was found, then it just finishes the block without doing any action. How do we tell, hey, if nothing is found, just default to this, like kind of what else. And the word for it is default. So basically default is just like invalid day. That's just right here inside switch. Ctrl Shift F10. And as you can see here, we have invalid day inside switch. I don't have a break. Why? Because the break here technically would be uh, redundant. We are at the end, but the default does not necessarily need to be at the end. We can have it like here, but then you have to do exactly the same thing. Since it started here, default will be executed. What's going to happen if there are no breaks? it's going to start going down. But after it finds Sunday, after Sunday there is a break, and that's why we only have invalid day and then Sunday. But technically it's better readable when the default is at the end. That's how our brain works. You start from top down, all the conditions, and suddenly, oh, looks like uh, nothing was found, then this is what's going to happen in case nothing is found. Now, that is another syntax. Uh, it was introduced on Java 13 that made even cleaner, the, the switch is like this. Uh, I can copy here or create another class. I'll insert Java class. Uh, let's have here on the channels 0, 9. And then PSVM, not here, but here. And I'm going to copy this switch statement. So I'm just copying whatever we had, and then I'm going to create here int day, and I will give a number here, for example, seven. Okay, so what's the syntax that we have that's a little bit different and looks a little bit better? It's to start the same way, switch, and then we have here day. But then we are going to have the following. We have here case one, for example, and we are going to use this arrow. And we are going to write here, for example, south, and this would be Sunday. And then you press Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D. You put here two, 
three, four, five, six. Control D to duplicate the line, seven. And you do exactly the same. You have Sunday and you have here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And now I'm going to execute. So if you take a look at day is seven, but let's put day three. So technically it should print here Tuesday. So Ctrl Shift F10. And we have here Tuesday and Tuesday. So when you use this new syntax, used uh, starting with Java 13, you don't have to add the break. In this case, it will just stop at what we have. Another advantage uh, of this uh, syntax is that you can have multiple numbers. So for example, you could have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, straight in one case. But of course you cannot have another case with the same values we have here. So let me just remove. So you are going to see how it works. You see, go to shift F10 and now all of the, the dates will be here Sunday because each one of these cases will work. That syntax, it does not work here. If you try to add here, for example, nine, or actually, uh, oh, that's interesting. I thought it was not going to work, but look like it works. So let's try it out here. Let me press Control Z and remove everything here. And let me come here because I didn't think this was going to work. Two, three, four, five, six. And let me remove all of these here. And let's see if it's going to work. Yeah, looks like it's going to work. Control Shift F10. Yeah, we do have here Sunday 3. Oh, interesting. So as you can see, you have to keep up to date with so many different things. Sometimes even though you work with things every day, you have to try different things just to make it uh, to see if it works. Okay, guys, so that's it for the, the switch statement. We can also add the default here, for example, invalid date. But if you take a look at what we have here and what we have here, so for here we have from line six to line 29, and from here we have line 32 to line 40. So here we have only eight lines and we are solving exactly the same problem. So when you start seeing things a little bit differently and you try different options, you will see that it's always possible to refactor. Basically, this is what we are doing. We had the code achieving a specific task and then we rewrote the same code achieving the same task. It's working exactly the same way, but we have now a code that's better readable. So we improve the readability. So this is called refactoring. So I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye bye.